I start with the interview. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome back to Agri Adventures. We are on Radio Italiano Delaide, and today we are in this beautiful location that is McLarenville with Ben Paxton. Me, it's Simone Berliat. Uh, as you know, I work in hospitality and I'm following this development of the project Agri Adventures. Agri Adventures is a development platform for sustainable agriculture and food production. And uh, in uh, the radio, it's a program in where we speak about agriculture, food production, and the connection between hospitality and tourism. Okay, so uh, Ben is owner, I believe. Of family. Family. So there is family is owning a Paxton uh, winery, Paxton Vineyard. That's right. Okay. Can you please explain me a little bit what's the difference between winery and vineyard? Why there is this, this connection, uh, connection? Well, uh, historically, my father, he started growing grapes in 1979 uh -huh. and selling to other wineries. So purely vineyard owning, okay. uh, growing Perfect. grapes and selling them. And so Paxton Vineyards grows grapes, okay. Paxton Wines. Makes wine. Makes wine. Okay. Yep. So vineyard and wine. Perfect. So um, you already said something. How long have you been living over here? Uh, I grew up here and my father spent most of his life in this area from I think about the age of three. Wow, so I can say that you are uh, you almost a native Australian. <laughs> no, nearly a local, <laughs> like yes. If you, if you get a bit more sun, you're going to be <laughs> really local. Okay, lovely. Perfect. And would like to tell us a little bit more about the history. Do you know something like, you know, why your father moved over here or... Uh... Uh, well, my father was uh, in, in his previous life was an almond grower in Wollonga, mm. which is the next town. So yes. about seven kilometers that way. I'm going to be there uh, tomorrow, probably in a couple of days. Yes. Uh, and in the late seventies, he, he was tossing up whether to grow almonds in an area that had more water or change industries, growing stuff as a farmer. That's what he knew how to do. And he was convinced by a friend of his, Greg Trott, who started Wirra Wirra Winery. Oh yeah. Um, that the wine industry had a bright future in McLaren Vale and in Australia. Uh, so David, my father, uh, decided to purchase an old vineyard in McLaren Vale and move away from almonds and start producing wine grapes. Okay. I, I think that I've been uh, reading something about the also government have been helping to remove uh, almond trees and uh, helping to plant vineyards. Is that correct? Uh, well, at that time in the 70s, the government was paying people to pull out vineyards. Oh, really? Yes, because there was a wine glut and uh, they paid uh, growers to pull out vineyards on the proviso they won't, wouldn't replant. I think it was for seven years. Um, so at that time, vineyards were very cheap. It was just the foresight of David's mate that um, uh, was suggesting the industry was going to bounce back. Uh, so it was a, an affordable time to get into the industry. Oh, okay. And, and because grapes don't need as much water as almonds, uh, the water uh, resources were more suited, even in those days, uh, to grape growing. And, and that was how he started. So he bought uh, one- Visionary, like he'd been seeing the future of development of- Yeah, well that, that vision came through uh, his friend, Greg Trott, and, and he is since deceased, but is considered one of the visionaries of McLaren Vale most definitely and the Australian wine industry. Okay, so some people interesting to meet. That's really cool. Are they still over here? No, no, no. sadly, no. Sorry, very sorry to hear about that. Okay, so one of the things that make me came over here in, in Paxton uh, uh, Vineyard uh, was that you work in a um, biodynamic regime. So something that I, 
I've been in contact or I've been influenced from my mother's experience uh, back in, in Italy and now in Bulgaria. And uh, I always found interesting that uh, concepts like biodynamic, but even permaculture, they apply in a different ways in, uh, uh, in different productions. I mean, is it more a philosophy than then you apply to a product than not a simple technique? That's what I like. So, uh, who came with the idea of biodynamic? Uh, I think if we go back again, when, when David got into the wine industry growing grapes, he, um, he started, because he was quite good at it, he started showing other people how to grow grapes all over the country. So he ended up consulting all around the country and developing a lot of vineyards, both for himself and other people. Okay. Um, and uh, he's a progressive, um, forward-thinking, risk-taking uh, sort of man who who embraced all technology, any advancements, whether it be canopy management, irrigation systems, variety, new varieties, whatever it was, he was prepared to give it a go. And in the um, early 2000s, uh, he was trying to find a way to grow better grapes. All about quality. Uh, so in the in the 80s it was about quantity. In the 90s uh, David started converting all our vineyards to super premium quality grade mm. wine grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, and and in the 2000s we were, we were getting there um, but it's never going to be perfect so there must be something else. What else could be done to improve uh, grape quality of course. Um, and and at the time still we were making a little bit of wine under our own label but selling a lot of grapes um, and when you get paid for quality you want to hit the top oh yeah uh, of course and, and uh, sorry just small question you speak about quality but the quality is applied to wine making because uh, uh, often people uh, think quality and then they think qualities for everything but if you have grapes for table you have one quality if you have grapes for wine you have another like generally grapes for wine are not big juicy they are still juicy but they're smaller because you want to have more skin on it is that correct that's correct and and also in in wine grapes say in mclaren vale we produce a b and c grade generally uh, c grade doesn't have as much color and flavor as a grade uh, or the natural balance. So if we're going for A grade, we want excellent color, excellent flavor, and excellent uh, acid balance as well uh, when they're ripe. Uh, so to achieve that, how do you get the balance? Um, anyway, all the technology had come to one point and what else could be done? Uh, and at the time, my brother, Michael Paxton, mm -hmm. um, he's a, a viticulturalist and winemaker and he suggested David go and attend a biodynamic conference in Beechworth in 2004. Wow, okay, okay. So that's where that started from and David went to the conference uh, which he uh, he was amused to find out it was in the mental asylum in Beechworth. <laughs> Uh, and he thought it was quite fitting when the first yes. people started talking Absolutely. because as a practical farmer he didn't understand um, people getting so excited about the moon and magnativity of stuff and and just some of the more out there concepts of biodynamics Absolutely. Um, but then some practical uh, farmers orchardists and uh, fruit growers grape growers came out and said this is what we do this is biodynamics as we see it and these are the results we're getting ah so the beginning was philosophy and uh, your brother was saying they are crazy and uh, and then uh, when they he has seen the, the, the practical results they thought oh, maybe they are not that's so crazy. right and okay that's and, cool. I like and it. over the four days or whatever it was and it's my father not my brother but um they ate and drank all organic and biodynamic. And on the way home, 
he decided to convert one property immediately to biodynamic practices. Wow. So we converted our first property in 2004 and at the time uh, it was considered the, the largest single site in the southern hemisphere of a vineyard and that was 50 acres. So, so not terribly big by today's standards. Yep. Um, and then in 2005, uh, we converted the rest of our properties because the results we were seeing were positive, super positive at that time. That's good. That's good. So you, you, you are mainly uh, family as family. You are pioneer pioneers of biodynamic in McLaren Vale, and maybe in South Australia too. Um, we certainly one of the first and one of the first large scale commercial adopters of biodynamics. Which is already saying a lot of things because big commercial is really difficult if you want to do biodynamic or there are a lot of, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. And um, so you, you're speaking, you began this, as family you began when? 15 years ago? 79. Se okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what have you seen? Like a dynamic is changing, is giving you the results that you were looking or? Ah, uh, yes, sorry. Well, the, the grape growing started in 79. First conversion, 2004 okay, to biodynamics. So 2000, okay, 2004. Okay, yeah, 2004. And then all of our own vineyards, the rest of our own vineyards, we have six properties. Um, the other five were converted in 2005. Okay. Um, and the results we were seeing immediately is the soil health. So our biggest focus is on soil health. If you have a healthy soil, you've got a better chance of having a healthy grapevine producing better flavoured fruit. That's simple as that. That's simple as uh, yes. So immediately the soil improved, uh, the vines didn't suffer, and uh, I think realistically quality improvements have taken time it's not uh, chemical use to biodynamics instant no, it's improvement not. in quality no. is there a conversion time uh, conversion takes about three years three years like yep. uh, even for uh, uh, organic is that correct yes yeah, yeah. so okay. to be biodynamic uh, biodynamically certified, you must be organically certified. Mm -hmm. And then biodynamics we refer to as the most advanced form of organic farming. So once you get to organic, it's going further. And, and it's, you... it's more than avoiding the use of uh, synthetic chemicals. It, it's adding back. Which is uh, one of the motives why I'm trying to uh, uh, promote sustainable agriculture. When you speak about the health of the soil, um, one of the things I like to say to people to let them understand how important is sustainable agriculture is there is a study from Sydney University that says that uh, we are running out of fertility from the topsoil of the planet. You speak about planet-wise, like the topsoil is that what matter of uh, soil which we have all the microorganisms that mm. they are giving and creating the nutrients for the planets, right? for plants or the vegetables. And the use of the conventional agriculture that we are doing so far, it's depleting this uh, these fertility to the point that we need to change it in the next 60 years, because if we don't do it, it could be a big problem. Absolutely. So speaking about the dynamic, in the, it's really nice because you are saying that if you are here, it means that you are making money. So you're, you're living at least, <laughs> unless, unless you will not be here. Survival. Then, yeah, survival. Yep. Survival mood. And then you're still speaking that you, you started conversion in 2004, correct? Yes, that's okay. right. And then we are in 2019. Your wines are on the shelf and people is buying your products and coming over here and you are on biodynamic. Correct. Which yes. means that it's possible to do. It's possible to at least live on it. And then the, 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 the step is we can even make enough money because uh, the other point is why to make something that is fancy and sustainable in terms of planet, but if it's not sustainable for businesses, uh, it's going to be harder to implement. But you are one of the examples that is possible to implement in businesses too. As they say, 
as they say. As they say, you yeah. cannot be green when you're in the red. Yes, absolutely. So this is a perfect example of the things they can work. Now, I have a couple of technical questions. I mean, I do not have a deep knowledge in biodynamic, but I have a lot of curiosity. I know that uh, like my mom was doing rotation, but she was working on crops that they can rotate like a tomato You have fruits, you have flowers, you have roots and uh, they can be rotated while vineyards They cannot be rotated. You cannot move a vineyard with 60 years old or 50 years old and say mm. I'm gonna put you over there so What are the differences like what do you have to do different on the field than the conventional uh, or an organic uh, grape producer What's the difference? In okay, this the, um, probably the biggest thing is um, natural balance through diversity. So okay. vineyards are essentially monoculture. Okay. It's one grapevine, the same as the next grapevine. Mm. But then you have all the, um, all the stuff growing on the floor of the vineyard and what's growing around it and what's in the atmosphere and what's in the soil. So the, uh, 90% of all life on earth is beneath the soil surface, mm -hmm. hence the focus on soil so much. So we, with biodynamics, uh, we apply composts and preparations to increase that life in the soil, whether it's microbial, fungal, insects, worms, all the goodies. You want all of them there. It's not eradicating one, it's creating natural balance by having them all working. Absolutely. And if, if they break down the rotting vegetable matter from the diverse range of plants growing on the surface under the vines, uh, then all those uh, microbes and whatever in the soil, they break the plant matter down, turn it into humus uh, and make the, uh, all the nutrients, uh, they can convert them into plant available forms. And they do that with minerals as well. Uh, so the vine can take what it needs when it wants rather than applying a say a salt based fertilizer that it, it's forced nitrogen through osmosis um, which is scientifically outstanding but it knocks off a lot of the bugs and the vine grows quickly and is more disease susceptible because the cell walls are thinner okay okay i got it i got it i got it you're giving enough time to the plants, you're just facilitating the transferments of nutrients. And then uh, because you don't uh, doing so, you're uh, allowing just the natural development of the plant, which grows. It's like having a kid and giving, pumping it up and having big, but still, oh, I'm a dumb kid. Or leaving the vines growing properly, giving enough time and they grow stronger. That's right, yes, they grow stronger. There's, and rather than eradicating all fungi, in the in the canopy um, you encourage all the all the blooms that naturally grow on the berries as botrytis is an issue for us mm -hmm. um, and botrytis is it's a, a fungi that is in the atmosphere all around the world so when the conditions are right you're likely to get it land the spores land on your grapes and can start um, growing and multiplying uh, so rather than eradicating everything, uh, it's not that we, we're not exposed to botrytis, it's just when the spores land, they've got competition. Exactly. Uh, so we don't get wiped out um, by botrytis. It's not that we won't get any, mm -hmm. um, but through natural balance, it doesn't take over. That is really is a smart idea. Like I, I know botrytis because it's used in many wines, like Sauternes was the first. Yes, yep. And I was wondering that how is possible the botrytis can be a problem over here considering the weather. The botrytis is really connected with the, uh, with the, the humidity in the air and yes. these kind of things. But if you say that is a problem, I, I really betrayed. Gen generally, botrytis is only an issue early in the season mm -hmm. and late in autumn. In autumn. Yeah. Which for some producers, they want to go on sweet wines, is, is, is not an issue. Uh, absolutely. And, they... and if we wanted it, sometimes it's too dry. But... Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it can be dry really quick. Um, so, yeah. How was it? 
uh, in terms of um, like develop this pathway so far? Uh, what were the problems that you faced? And then I would like also to know what other people, like other professionals like you, they're thinking about what you're doing. Because sometimes when you have people approaching this kind of alternative way of agriculture, they are seen like weirdos. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so witchcraft. <laughs> yes. uh, I I think um, the the results that and it's not only us. There's there's many biodynamic growers now. Mm -hmm. The results we're achieving are unmistakable, uh, and and people can't deny the results we're getting. Um, now, you can get carried away with the hocus pocus or what's perceived as that uh, of biodynamics, but what we do seems to work. And when we first started, uh, a lot of people were watching and waiting for failure. Um, now it's, it's much more positive. The consumers are becoming a lot more positive about biodynamics. Um, I think uh, in Australia, probably 30 years ago, organic was an idealistic way of producing anything. It wasn't a necessarily anything to do with quality. Um, so organic wines got a pretty bad, bad rap. And uh, now with the, um, the organic movement in all food production, uh, wine is now being seen as Organic and biodynamic wines are seen as positive, uh, and yet in the marketplace, if our wine doesn't taste better than the next one at the same price, it doesn't matter whether it's organic or not. Quality is king, mm. still at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that is also getting my in my sector because. Uh, the way how you present the product, the way how you uh, explain the product uh, to the final customer, it does the difference. Often, uh, final customer has a grasp of quality but doesn't really understand the full range of quality and then it can be subjective. Absolutely. So, like my job when I work in a restaurant or when I do communication, I try to create this connection and explain this is the flavor you have at the moment at the palate and it's that motive, that motive, that motive. This product is designed to be used in this way. I can find sometimes when I do wine testings and I say to my guest, uh, look, I'm going to present you this product and I'm going to explain you how to use this product. Mm -hmm. And often they laugh because wine, you drink it. And I mean, <laughs> that is the use that you do. However, also with an Italian background, when I, when I have to speak about wine, sometimes I can say this wine goes really well with food and without food probably won't work well. And other wines, they work well on their own. And if you place on the table with other food, they're going to be uh, the nights that they're going to run destroying everything. There's too much flavor, too much intensity. So you were speaking about, uh, and we're moving to that, uh, something interesting that you, we are going to organize together, or maybe you're organizing and just going to place on the market for you, uh, which is, uh, you said how uh, the customer, they, they, they are starting to grasp a little bit about biodynamic, is that yes, correct? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so when I came over here and you spoke with me about the idea to organize a biodynamic tour, and where you were able to uh, to showcase the differences in in the mean of a testing, also showcasing where the vines are, what the process behind, all these kind of things. I, I thought it was great. And um, what do you expect? What uh, do you do, would, what would you like out to of see our, out of our tour? Out about the tour and yeah, what um, what we. Uh, the, the interest is growing a lot in biodynamics, so uh, obviously we're, we're sitting at our cellar door property now, um, so visitors come and often are very interested in biodynamics and they might know a little bit or they might know a lot. Um, one of the advantages we have that we, we don't really capitalise on here is we do a lot of the, um, we make, we grow the herbs and make preparations here. Uh, we've got a vineyard right out the back uh, where we can show people uh, the vines, the soil, uh, some of the biodynamic preparations that uh, people may or may not have heard about, uh, how they're made, what they look like, what they smell like, 
and explain the benefits of them. Mm. Uh, and then we can go through to the wine and the wine making, uh, explaining uh, pretty much the Paxton point of view of biodynamics. Uh, we, we treat it as a business and uh, we don't stray too far from Steiner's um, philosophy or mm. at least our understanding of it. Um, which is a bit open to interpretation and development. So some things we do slightly differently. Some that we're unsure about, we stick um, strictly to the recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and then on a, on a practical basis, because we, we now uh, run about 350, 400 acres biodynamically, uh, it's it's quite a commercial operation, so we can explain how we do that as well, mm -hmm. and and show people at the same time. Cool, cool. I'm I'm going to be one of your first customers, and for sure. Excellent. Coming over. Okay, so it was a pleasure to speak with you, Ben, and uh, thank you for telling us about you know the experience and uh, all the ideas and everything behind, and. Um, Thank you for the people following us on the YouTube channel and uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, if you like it and you subscribe, we're going to be more happy <laughs> and you're <laughs> going to get more of me. I'm not sure if you want to have it. So thank you very much from everyone who following us on Agri Adventures on uh, Radio Italia Uno del Aide and see you the next time. Thanks, Simone. Thank you.